Here is station two, and what I have set up are three beakers on a whiteboard that I've labeled one, two, and three. For step two, it says in beaker one, add two small scoops of baking soda. So I have a scoopula here and baking soda. So one, two small scoops. In number two, I'm going to add one scoop of baking soda Get a little bit more there. And then I have a separate scoopula for cream of tartar. This is cream of tartar. It's something that you add in dishes for th as a thickening agent. There's cream of tartar. And then in number three, I'm going to add two small scoops of cream of tartar. Then I'm going to swirl these around to make sure they get nice and mixed up. And I'm going to make some observations of these. So they all look like dry powders. The cream of tartar looks a little bit different than the baking soda, but in general, they look fairly the same. Temperature wise, the dishes are all maintaining room temperature. So what I'm gonna then do is then I'm gonna add about 10 milliliters of water to each one. So there's a 10 milliliter line right there to the bottom line. So I'm going to add 10 milliliters here, 10 milliliters here, 10 milliliters here. And what you hear right away is in that middle one fizzing. So clearly that's an observation that we can make, that a chemical reaction of some sort is happening between the, the two that are mixed. The ones that are by themselves, nothing. Another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to feel for the temperature. So this one still feels room temperature. This one is starting to feel very cold. This one again. This one actually feels a little bit warm. So when I added water to the cream of tartar, it warmed up the water. Didn't really change the temperature of the water. When I added it to the mixture here, the water got very cold. So, so far, no fizzing, no change in temperature. Fizzing change the temperature very cold. And then this, no fizzing, but the water got a little bit warmer. So now I'm going to add this stuff called universal indicator. And this is going to determine the, the pH. So I'm going to add two drops to number one. Swirl that around. And you see it's kind of a blue-green color. Number two, you'll see it's kind of a yellow-green color. And then number three, you see it's a pinkish color or a red color. So the universal indicator, if you look on your table here, there should be a a color code scheme. So that should tell you which um, property of the solution each of these is. So you will fill in on the table the color and the property of the solution. So in the analysis, you want to identify some of the other evidence that you have, have seen that the water acted as a catalyst. 
So to remind you what a catalyst means, it's something that when you mix water together with it, it causes the water to help carry out a chemical reaction. And then for part B, what does beaker 2 tell you happens when you mix acids and bases? And what is the name of a solution made up of a weak acid and base mixed? So you might need to do a little bit of research to answer that question. But that is the conclusion to Station 2.